from the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all-natural foundational Black American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. SJB. My loud dog back here snoring. Hey, Tariq. How you doing, sir? Uh, how you doing, SB? I'm doing okay. Um, I just had a quick question. It won't, it won't take up much of your time, unlike the uh, previous guest. Um, I also disagree okay. with the big time. Um, I actually want to order your, um, you, I, I saw your website prior to the microphone check, um, kicks, Kickstarter GoFundMe project, and you did have a, yeah. like, I saw like a week ago, you had like a bundle of like five DVDs and a Blu-ray disc of like your latest thing, as well as buck breaking. Now, I'm curious, I live in Canada, I live in British Columbia, Canada. I'm curious if you if you ship to Canada and if you do, I don't mind paying the extra few dollars for international shipping from the United States to get it. Yeah, yeah, we ship to Canada. Nice. Now here's the next question. Um, I checked your bio and like on your Twitter uh, feed here, and when I, when I click the, the Kickstarter link, it just brings me to the microphone check. And so I can't, I actually tried Googling and you know, I think we all know everyone in the space knows that uh, Google's just isn't what it used to be back when we were younger. It is very difficult to find exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm curious, I, here's a suggestion from, from me, a Canadian, for my real FBA nigga, is uh, maybe just add your, oh, another, oh, another link. Oh, no. oh. oh, sorry, sorry, my bad. Oh, my, no. bad. my bad, my bad. Lord, Lord, Lord. Boy, you white supremacy. Well, the thing is, I, I, if there's anyone that's going to change my mind, it'll be you. God. Now, are you actually in Canada, or are you somewhere legit, in, like, legit um, Canada, Canadian, British Columbia. You know, okay. Okay, got him, got him. I okay, actually so, didn't, I, I didn't mean that by disrespect, by the way. Uh, yeah, you did, but, but, but I, look, I'm, you white supremacists right. don't stop me, but go ahead. Okay. And, they, and and by the way, and they always say how racist Canada is not. Canada is full of these little passive-aggressive white supremacists. And what's interesting, y'all ain't got no brothers up there. So who are y'all racist? Y'all have nobody to be racist against up there. You're just mad. And very passive aggressive. So y'all call us down here. Y'all don't. You're, you're sitting there in the woods with moose, and you know, you're, um, just sitting there eating um, quiche and bologna sandwiches and shit. And you don't have anybody to be racist towards up there. So y'all don't know what to do. But go ahead, brother. Go ahead, Jay. You're actually not wrong. Um, there's definitely a lot of sentiment of just just general anger and frustration so I'm, i won't disagree with you there because uh, right, i think i would right. i would actually lose the argument if i did so right. at least i'm so where's the, where's, about the, where's the where's the now where's the passive aggressive energy coming from where's this angry passive aggressive energy coming from why why are you passive mm. aggressively upset with black people what is that about oh i'm not i'm not upset with black people um, i'll admit though well that, yeah if you, if you're well, using the n-word you're trying to work no, your no, way I, I use, use the that's one. passive Sorry, um, I actually meant it as like, like the soft R, not like the insulting one. Right. So, uh, so, yeah. so you're, you're in a place. Like I even call my white brothers. There are, that. There are no black people up there. So you, you're in in a white space. You can live your white life. Everything is white and great. You got, you got all the tuna casserole you can imagine having. You got Rice Krispie treats for days. You're, you're living your best life, but you're still passively, aggressively um, upset with black people. What was that about? Well, uh, that's not necessarily true. I mean, there are some, there's, there's definitely a, like Canada is a majorly multicultural uh, nation. I mean, th I would, I wouldn't say there's as many, um, FBAs or tethers that there might be in the United States, but there's certainly a, a handful of uh, minorities in Canada, like no question. Like I would almost consider like, or it really depends on the area. Like if you go to a metropolitan, metropolitan city like Vancouver, British Columbia, I mean, you, you'd be, it would be a miracle. It would be like seeing a unicorn if you, if you spotted a white person because it's full of... Now, uh, when, did, when, did, when did your family get there from France? 
je suis, je suis, mes parents ne sont pas français, mais je suis capable ouais. de parler en français quand même. Quand ils disent, parlez-vous français, c'est tout ce que je sais. Shit. <laughs> yeah, well, that's not bad. That, that was correct. So, well done. Uh, yeah. Félicitations. Right. So, when did they get there from um, France? Well, um, my, I'm actually, my parents are Anglo-Saxon, both my mom and dad. So, I unfortunately don't have any French blood because I think that would be pretty based, to be honest. So, I'm Anglo-Saxon. Not that, not that there's anything wrong with that either, but... but there were some Anglos in France. What, what Anglo from where? From England? Yeah, England. Okay. And okay. probably okay. Scotland. Scotland too, maybe. Scotland, right, right, right. Got it. Okay, okay. All right. Anyways, but yeah. anyways um, before before yeah. you, we, um, I eject from the so we can you know rotate the uh, listeners. I don't want to take too much time. My suggestion was simply, um, just is, is it okay if you just add in addition to your um, microphone check, um, Kickstarter, just the link that goes to your original website because I literally cannot find it. Like maybe it's just because I'm a dumb re- retard. Um, I just, I really, I really legit will, will buy the, uh, the set. Like, I'm not joking. I, I want to see it. Like I, yeah, I legit want to see right. it. So there you go. All right. Thank you so much. All right. All so right. You, you got you to watch some of them white supremacists with that passive aggressive, you know, try to slip in nigga. No, 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 we don't do that. You know, I don't know what your buddies up there in Canada <clears throat> let you get away with, but you know, it's a different vibe. It's a very different vibe. Let's get um, a Renza. Let's get a Renza in here. And then we'll get GL Promotions, a Renza, GL Promotions. Then we'll get Kang. Um, we're going to get a few people. So, a Renza, you want to get in? Then we'll get a Renza, GL Promotion, with Kang, and then Good Trouble. So, uh, Arenza, where you at, ma'am? Now, we'll give Arenza three seconds to get on. If you don't, I'm going to move on. Yo, uh, One, Ty- Tyreek, what's good? Is that um G Promotions? GL yeah. Promotions? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, Tariq, man. Uh, I wanted – it was like two two or three dudes before Um, he was talking about the Democratic Party. And um, I just wanted to chime in about uh my, my basically outlook on it was like I feel like as far as like when people look at the Democratic Party, you you spoke on the boule, yes. the, the boule before, and um the way that homie was coming off, he was coming off real boule ish, and I look at it from a point of view from um the differentiation between W. E. B. Du Bois and Booker T. Washington, and as far as like Booker T. Washington being like the common folk, and homie that was talking when he was he was basically trying to use all these big words was more so on some boule shit and trying to basically give his um reasoning on why um biden was good and and you said um as far as like the best of two parties it really doesn't even matter about the best of two parties if we just going back on history alone from the if we just talk about the crack era into the present day or we could even start we could even stop at around nine nineteen ninety nine. 1999 everything that the democrats did as far as like, even if we go from Reagan all the way down, it was just to dismantle everything that black Americans did. And I think a lot of people forget about that shit and they try and gross over it because a lot of the new voters are young and they try and be like, oh, forget about the past. And it's like, yo, fam, no, let's not forget about the past. Because if we really want to be honest, ever since MLK and Malcolm X died, they just been covertly doing the COINTEL pro shit and they just been reworking the shit years after years. And I and I and that's why I just be mad hush when I talk to average people as far as like my own people, because I'm in the construction industry and it just be like, yo, bro, everything that they do, no matter what industry they're in, it's about omitting the black man or black woman out of a lot of shit. And people be thinking like just because life is a little bit better now that Oh, just because we're comfortable, let's be hushed because we're on we're we're, we're in a house now with the with with with, with massa. Like, nah, bruh. We're supposed to be owning the house. Right. You feel me? But I just Right, man. But thank you, but I had to land your plane. Um, yeah. You know, the the Democrats, man, you know, they 
they undermine us with a smile. You know, if the the Republicans are if the Republicans are, are going to do something, you know, they they just let us know what it's going to be. Hey, we don't want you over here. All right, cool. But the Democrats, they're like, yeah, come on in here. We do want you in here, but we're going to fondle you, rape you, molest you, and then um, psychologically crush you. So we're going to destroy you from within and then release you out into the community so that you can poison everybody else. Some of the Democratic policies are horrible. Lord, it's it's not good. You want to you know want to you want to know what a democratic policy policy is? Democratic energy. Look at the BET Awards. Did you guys see the? Well, I know y'all didn't. Did you see clips from the BET Award? I didn't watch one iota of it. Um, but if you go down the Twitter timeline, you'll see little clips that'll pop up. I'm actively not looking for it because I already know it's a stank show, and. You know, when I scroll my Twitter timeline, certain videos will pop up. It, it It's stanky and funky looking, you know, the, the stank twerking in the audience and just just complete niggotry. And, you know, that's how the Democrats want us. A bunch of plantation bucks. You know, that's how they want us. They They want us to be misrepresented. Looking like plantation pickaninnies with a damn non-black overseer watching over, which is Fat Joe. There, there's a reason why they're platforming Joe the way they're platforming it. Joe hasn't really. When when the last time Joe had an album? They're parading him around a lot for a reason. He's the Trojan horse to bring in all the other white Latinos and other people to erase our culture. Because that's what they're actively doing now. You want to know a democratic policy? Their policy now is to erase our culture, especially our music culture. They're actively and aggressively trying to do that right as we speak. And this is why we're pushing back. This is why this film, Microphone Check, is so very important. Let's get um, Johnny in here. Get Johnny. Mr. Johnny. All right, Johnny, hop on, brother. Johnny? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you. What's up, Johnny? Yeah, I was uh I just wanted to compliment on what, what the uh, comment on what the young brother was saying. Um the L C or G L, whatever it was. Um, we're not living better now. Actually, during the nineteen sixties, they had more wealth than us. You know, I was in macroeconomics class um, today, and um, my instructor brought that up. So I had to do some research on it. Since the 1960s up until now, there was only a, a basically a 2% pay increase in the wages. And that, that was nullified because everything else became more expensive. So the 2% wage increase in the wages didn't really pan out to nothing because like I said, everything became more expensive when you got the technology and all of that. And my instructor was talking about how iPhone Apple was continuously able to charge a thousand dollars for the phones and stuff. And yeah. this is why. And then also you write about the Democratic Party, man. I, I I was so pissed off today, excuse my language, because I'm sitting here like, wait a minute, a lot of stuff can happen overseas. But for the African Americans that's here, that was born here and stuff, we getting slaughtered by police, white supremacists walking up in the churches and everything, killing us and stuff like that. But y'all can't pass none of the legislation that will help benefit us. But you, y'all, both parties can unify to pass legislations to aid foreigners that look like y'all. That mm -hmm. that that made me yeah. real mad, mad. You know, I'm sitting up in here doing my um business law or uh, homework and stuff i had to stop because i was i was real excuse me upset i, I was about to cuss but excuse me i was real upset and behind so much let me land your plane okay thank you so much i, I appreciate your call a lot of people having problem landing in planes tonight but i will help you sometimes people kind of get into a circle and they don't know how to close it out but i appreciate you and i uh, respect your input brother good stuff but yeah the, the democrats man and the guy who called up the the democratic shield you know we, again the think tanks send him out every time 
um, when we talk about being not for this immigration policy because it doesn't work for us, yeah, he, the guy who called, he's going to promote it because he, he's an immigrant. He's Haitian. So that's why the Biden administration, they get a bunch of quote unquote black people who are immigrants to push these bills. And now that we are delineating, their numbers are in the tank right now. That's why the caller was like, well, y'all, the black people is going to come home. No, that's not our home. No, no, no. The Democrats are messing up. And let me tell you something. You know, this is leaving the door wide open for some independents to come on in and do their thing. I'm telling y'all, behind the scenes, there's some independents that's that's cooking up some stuff right now. They're cooking. The independents, you got some independent candidates, man. They can come on in and then swoop some of that black vote right on up, man. And, and the Democrats will be crushed. The Democrats are desperate. Look at what they had to do to Trump. They had to put charges on Trump to stop Trump's momentum because the Democrats are going to, you know, they're going to possibly lose majorly. You know, who are they going to run besides Biden? Because they know Biden ain't really got it popping like that. We ain't really rocking with Biden. So let's get FBA pizzazz in here. FBA pizzazz. FBA. What's up, Pizzazz? How are you, bro? I just wanted people to peep the game and the fact that we got a bunch of old white dudes who just keep getting um, elected. It's racism in that alone. These guys have been sitting on the perch yeah. for 60, 70 years. It looked like they had to put uh, the Republican dude back on the charger when he keep freezing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Lord, Lord. You know, or Biden running around tripping and falling every place. It's racism in just the political process alone. So you're right. We just have to find, I guess, the positives, or if you want to call it that, in whatever we're doing. But I think the key is for us just to vote locally, like you've been teaching us for years. See if we can find people yeah. locally and just try to get our economics up in our own independent incubators in our community, man. And I'll land my private jet. Peace, man. My man, thank you so much, brother. Man, yeah, it's real out here, man. It's real, but, you know, we're going to do our thing as long as we stay on code. You know, everybody, all eyes are always on us. Everybody's watching what foundational black Americans are doing. They are, everything is all about monitoring us. If we ain't voting, oh, what's wrong? Let's monitor them. They'll spend more money monitoring us than spending money to give to us so that we can get ourselves together in our communities. You know, the, the money goes into watching what we do and just uh, keeping us subjugated to a certain degree. Anyway, let's get to it. Steven, I see some Japanese letters here. Um, Steven Tokyo or Stephen Tokyo, Steven or Stephen, Steven or Stephen, turn your microphone on. Oh, sorry. Can, can you hear me, brother? I can hear you. What's up, Stefan? Or is it Stefan or Stephen? It's Stefan. Stefan. Okay. What's up, Stefan? Yeah. What's up, Tyreek? Yeah, man. Just want to say, firstly, I uh, appreciate your work you've been doing over the years. I uh, love the movie, uh, your, your buck breaking movie, uh, Hit Home. You know, Am yeah. America needs to know about this, you know, history. And um, as you know, yeah. uh, as you saw the Japanese letters, I live in Tokyo, uh, hence my name. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I just want to say, like, um, I'm FBA, so uh, I was in the military. Oh. Yeah, I, I was in the military, but I, I relocated to uh, uh, Japan for a little bit. And uh, just want to say, man, how long you been married? how long you been married to your Japanese wife? Oh yeah, you already know. <laughs> you already know. I already know. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the only reason. That's the only reason. Go ahead. How long y'all been married? Uh, only two years, bro. Okay, that's cool. 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 Yeah. Um, now, what part of the where in the states were you from originally? Yeah, uh, so most of my peeps are from Philly, but we relocated to uh, North Carolina, and then now, okay, and then now my parents uh, they live in uh, Florida, retired in Florida. Got it. Now, what's the vibe in Japan? What's the vibe out there in Japan? In Tokyo, you're in Tokyo, right? Yeah, I'm in Tokyo, bro. Now, what's the vibe out there? Because you know, my family we've been wanting to visit out there. And a lot of people are saying we need to take our new movie microphone check out there because there's a big hip hop audience in Japan. Oh, definitely. So what's the vibe? Uh, definitely, yeah. bro. Uh, I recommend like, um, as we all know, 
uh, FBA culture is so dynamic globally, not just, you know, domestic in America, but globally, the Japanese eat up the hip hop. And they know they be, you yeah. see a lot of Japanese pop locking, break dancing. Uh, even them, they're trying to bite the flows, bite the styles or whatnot, you know, of, uh, you know, legendary yeah. hip hop artists. But the vibe is so cool. It's so chill, man. I, I think one thing I can appreciate about Japan is uh, the people are kind. I don't got to worry about someone called me a nigga or I don't have to, yeah. or I don't have to worry about police trying to pull me over, like driving while black or any of that, none of that. But, um, I just want to say, um, another reason why I wanted to come and speak is like, um, our African brothers be hating over here. On, oh, really? On, on, on FBA. What do they be saying? So, so for example, there are a lot of, uh, beautiful women of all shades here. But especially for Japanese women, uh, there's a place in Tokyo called Rapungi. So Rapungi is like the uh, black area where, or the urban area where you can see like very multicultural, like uh, a lot of Africans be there, you know, black people, a lot of uh, tourists be there. So, for example, uh, Africans, uh, they'll know that a difference between uh, FBA and Africans. So when they see me, they don't greet me. They don't look me in my eye because they know I'm FBA or I'm American, Black American. So, yeah. but usually they tell the Japanese women, like, excuse my my bad uh, African impression, uh, don't mess with them, American niggas. They have STDs and they'll cheat on you. And they tell all the Japanese, Hilarious. yeah, and they tell all the Japanese women here, like, don't mess with FBA uh, because you know they like cock blocking, you know, hating on us. Because, you know, our swag is strong so globally. So, yeah, bro, man. Wow. wow. That's crazy, man. But anyway, let me let me get some more folks oh, yeah, here. But thank you, yeah, man. Thank you so much. All right. Well, that, now that's interesting that you got Tethers over there hating. And I believe him. I saw a clip earlier with some Ghanaian rapper. He was, what, was, what was he saying? They they're trying to get their own version of hip hop called hip live or some shit, and it it was something about this guy. They wanted him to open for Jay Z, and he didn't want to do it because he you know didn't want to play second fiddle. It was some bullshit he said. But boy, these folks. <laughs> and let's keep it. Let's keep it a buck. And not not all, but you got a lot of the tether class. We be rent free. These people are over here in a, in Japan hating. You know, a lot of the tethers who come from these African countries, boy, we are, foundation of Black Americans are rent free. We don't be interacting with these folks or nothing, and they be hating. And then they get over here with that same kind of hate, and then get mad when we check them. We're saying, "Hey, man, cut that bullshit out, dude. We we're not trying to have all that." You niggas are divisive. Yeah, no, we're just not having that. And don't say we don't get on all the tethers. We get on the Latinos, too. We're, we're crushing them now with their nonsense. Y'all don't act like the FBA family ain't getting on Fat Joe's bumper and uh, the Joe Conzos and all of these people who are sitting up here trying to have a hostile takeover of our culture. Don't act like we're not getting at him because we're getting at him heavy. That's Damon. Hop on, Damon. Hey, Tariq, what's going on? I'm good, Damon. How are you, brother? I'm good. Uh, I just wanted to say I've been following following you for a long time since the Mac Lessons yes, days, and uh, I got all your uh, DVDs. And uh, I just want to say with that caller, I used to live in Japan too. And, oh, um, really? Yeah, I lived in Kyoto. Osaka, Yokohama, and Tokyo. Were um, you in the military? Uh, family was, but I, I wasn't in the military. But okay. um, so how was the that? What that dude said is kind of true. Like Africans, we hate. There's a there's an area in Tokyo called Kabukicho. It's a red light district, and most of the African cats run the red light district. But they they be they be low key kind of hating a little bit. But yeah, Japan is a great place to travel. I I don't living there, uh, it can be kind of crazy. But it's a good place to travel. If if you ever get a chance, go to Osaka. Um, you know, there's a lot of do they, like do they have like little 
small apartments and small hotels out there because I hate small hotel rooms. Do they have that? Uh, well, uh, like, I, you, like if you if you go to Tokyo and you don't have a lot of money, you might get a, into a small hotel. But they're they're reasonable hotels out there. Yeah, cause uh, I stopped through Japan one time. I was just yeah. a layover right. out there, and it was. But I want to kick it over there and just see what the vibe is. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Like some parts just feel like he- heaven. Like, yeah. I mean, the U.S. is probably the most free country, you know. But there are parts of Japan that just feel like, like so amazing. And like it was kind of like that uh, Mac Lesson show you had a long time ago about Hawaii. Like, yeah, uh, the freedom yeah. in Hawaii. It's it's like that in Japan a little bit. Uh, you just oh, have yeah. to have your money together. If you have your money together, yeah. you can speak the language, man. Yeah. So, I'm thinking now, did about you learn that from- uh, Did I'm, you learn that? From- I'm at uh N4 level. There's five levels. So, I can okay. un- I can I can I can understand the basics of it. I can under- like I can watch like a Japanese rap video and understand it, but I'm still learning. So, did you get your Japanese chick over there? Uh <laughs> I got a Japanese keep it real. I got a Japanese chick in uh, Kyoto, yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, uh, now, but, does she go here or do you go there? How, what's the vibe? Uh, I, I go out there every, like, spring to visit, and we just have okay. fun. and you know. But Kyoto girls are very quiet and sometimes shy. Osaka girls are – I had I had an ex from Osaka. Oof, they're kind of they're crazy. But uh, Tokyo – Tokyo girls are probably the best because they can speak English more. Um, okay. But yeah. <laughs> My man. Yeah. I remember. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, bro. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah I, I wanted to take the family out there to visit. Now, shout out to y'all. The brothers be out there living. Because when brothers be out there living, y'all, y'all got, that means they got them a Japanese chick. You know, that, that's what it is. We know what it is. When cats pack up and move way out there, ain't nobody just moving out there for nothing. Niggas out there either trying to pay a trick tab or they trying to wipe somebody up out there. You know, I, I see you. I see you, fellas. You know, I just want to visit out there. I, I don't want to, I have no desire to live in these countries. Anytime you see people trying to live in these countries like that, you know, they got a, a significant other out there, somebody they're trying to get at. And I don't have no desire to live in none of these places because I, I really basically only like FBA women like that. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, I have been with a whole bunch of different women, but, you know, kicking it. FBA women for me. I like FBA women. Women with some FBA lineage. That's what I like. There's nothing like FBA women. I like FBA's women vibe, the energy, the spirit, and the smell. Let me keep it a buck. I like the way FBA women smell. A lot of these other women, sometimes the smells are questionable, to be honest. And I'm not saying that to be mean-spirited. Sometimes with the smells, you don't know what you're going to get. I like good old-fashioned cocoa butter, sulfur eight hair grease smelling FBA sister. You think? That's what I like. You know, you'll, you'll watch them twerking videos from, from overseas. Sometimes you'll see videos pop on the timeline of, like, somebody in Uganda somewhere. And they might look good. You know, and they got a, a big ass and they're twerking. You see a lot of that on TikTok. You see a lot of that on Instagram. You see a lot of these foreign girls in these tight dresses with a whole gang of ass and they're twerking. I'm never impressed by that. Because in the back of my mind, I'm like... What if that room musty? That's what I'm thinking. I'm, you know, yeah, she got a big ass, but what if she might be musty? So I'm just not turned on by none of that. Yeah, she got a, a cat suit on, but the cat suit probably is musty. It, it probably is. And I'm not saying that to denigrate nobody. I'm not. But I be thinking that, to be honest. When I see an FBA sister twerking, I'm oh, she ain't musty. That ass is fresh. I know the FBA sister ain't musty. That's one thing FBA sister ain't going to be musty. It might be a little, she might be a little musty after work, but just out kicking it musty. No, 
No. Not no FBA system. That's what I do know. They they might get a little musty at the end of the day. A long, hard day of work and they've been cleaning the house. But nah. There's a certain kind of must <laughs> that some of these other women be having that I just cannot get with. It, it, that just throws me all the way off. And, you know, all right. And some of these other women, you get in the Far East, it, it's not even must. They be smelling like garlic. And it's just a real weird smell that I just, I don't, I'm on, I don't like certain smells on people. You know, I just, the, the scent will just throw me off. Man. man, let's get um Chris. Let's get Chris in. Chris, hop on, brother. Let's get Chris. Chris, turn your microphone on, sir. Oh, yeah, can you hear me now? I can hear you, Chris. How are you, sir? Oh, great, great. Oh, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm great, brother. All right. So my name is Chris. I'm from Nigeria, and um, yes, yeah. So there's there's something I I want to tell you. Okay, um, yeah, that's fine. But Chris, are you are you wearing that mask in your photo? Are you wearing it now? No, you sound no, 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 no. Can you hear me now? Can you hear I can hear a little bit better. But go ahead, go ahead. Okay, all right, all right. Um, I'm kind of um, wearing. My earpods. I don't know if it's affecting the sound. But what I want. Right. Am I okay? Go ahead, brother. Say what you got to say, All sir. Right, right. So, what I want to. Um, one thing I've noticed um, because I've been. Um, I've been now with you for about six, seven years now, you know, listening to you and all that. But I think in the past three years, yeah. I think, yeah, like two, three years now, you've been on um, the African, you know, all this um, bullshit that um, Africans um, bring across and all that. And I want to let you know that, yeah, you make a lot of points, uh, but I, I, I just want to tell you that some of these things are also um, consequences of white supremacy. You know, Africa was under colonialism. Many of us have been brainwashed to the point of, okay, um, white is good and black uh, is not so good. Um, right. Many of us have been taught to hate ourselves. Okay? It even happens to right. uh, African um, Americans themselves. Some of, some of them still hate themselves. Okay? So, this is something like um, is is something that we have to understand that is mental. It's not done deliberately. For example, w when I came to um, America for the first time, that was uh, I think two thousand and one, about twenty something years ago. The first guy that took me to his house was an African American. I just met him on the street. I stopped him and told him, "Look, I'm from Africa." I see you're a black guy, you know how, and he was so happy to meet me. You know, right? Yeah, you know, he took me to his house, showed me off his collection of CDs and all that, and uh, and you know we were friends. So I think um, some of your efforts should also be directed towards educating <laughs> um, Africans. Okay. Many of us have been watched. Okay, but hold on. Let's let's rewind. Let's rewind for a minute. Okay, okay. And Ashante, put your mute your microphone, Ashante. I'll get you next. But Chris, you said you met a dude, and he brought you to his house. Exactly. And y'all were listening to CD. Now, who is this dude? Did he want some bussy? What was that about? No, 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 no. I just saw him. <laughs> I saw him fixing um, a pool. Uh, I think he works for telecoms or something like that so i just you know in fact that that was about was it that, that was like was his like, name like, was his name was his name t.s giselle no 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 no, nothing like that and then in those days there was okay. nothing okay. like all this lgbt I'm, I'm talking about 2020 there was none of all this lgbt bullshit you know guys we are um just 
being normal guys. So it was a different time era then, okay? So I just saw him and asked okay. and told him, look, you're the... You're okay, okay, brother. Thank, 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 thank you, brother. I don't... My, I, my man is... I don't know where he's going. He's all over the place. I don't know. I think my man was about to be trafficked. <laughs> I, 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 I think... I think you got into some situations, brother. How did you get your green card? Okay, I don't. I don't know where this is about to go. Uh, it, it sounds weird. You meeting dudes, and he's they inviting you to their homes to listen to CDs. Whose CD was it? Was it Tevin Campbell's CD? This. I have a lot of questions. Did y'all listen to Lil Nas X? Who were y'all listening to at this man's house? It's just story just sounds very strange, and I don't know where it's going, brother. Now, Ashanti, turn your microphone on, man. Yo, peace, peace, Tariq. How you doing, sir? I'm good, brother. Where, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Cape Town, South Africa. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I've been a long-time fan, long-time listener. Um, even when you were down here, I was at your lecture, and uh, I love the work ethic, oh. and uh, I, I fully support FBA in everything that they do. And um, yes, a lot of a lot a lot of stuff that uh, a lot of people don't even know um, is the history between the uh, FBAs and South Africans. I can take it back to the early 1800s, where the FBAs were here, uh, 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 opening schools up, um, uh, teaching uh, Black South Africans on how to fight white supremacy. And uh, mm -hmm. I can even take it further back. So um, whoever comes on your space talking as a South African talking crap, I will show them exactly like who influenced. Of black South Africans, even in terms of music, like the influence that Black Americans had on Black South Africans. So much appreciate you and the family over there in America, the true indigenous people of that land. Peace, yes, love, and respect. And my, my, my brother and shout out to our brother Julius Malema out there. I love that brother and what he's doing. And shout out to the family out there. All right, peace, peace, sir. Yes, indeed. All right. Okay, we got a lot of folks in here. A lot of folks in here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get Willie Dynamite. That's one of my favorite black exploitation movies, by the way. Willie Dynamite. And, you know, Willie Dynamite, the character, is a movie called Willie Dynamite in the 70s about a pimp in New York. And it was played by the dude who plays Gordon on Sesame Street. <laughs> no cap. The dude who played Willie Dynamite was on Sesame Street is Gordon. It's fucking hilarious. So when I I always remember that. When I see Gordon on Sesame Street, I'm like, oh, that's Willie Dynamite. What's up, Willie? How are you? Peace, 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 brother. Uh uh, how's everything going, bro? I'm good. How you doing, brother? Yeah, I just wanted to real quick what's on my mind. I just wanted to speak about uh, you know what I've been seeing in the media as far as the conflict between Palestine and Israel right now. And one thing I've yep. noticed is that <clears throat> um, when it comes to the opposition against in Israel coming from the Palestinian community, uh, the, the, the vice supremacist media has never called these people anti-Semitic, Hitler, hate mongers of anything of, of that nature. It seems like any time that a uh, black american speak uh, uh, uh out about i guess uh, um speak out about our relationship between uh, our community and is um israel or or the jewish community we're always called hitler uh or we're called hate mongers we're called anti-semitic and it's funny that there's a full blown uh out conflict uh, between palestinians and uh the jewish community but no one from the jewish community particularly in the media has ever called these people hitler hate mongers or, or, or anti-Semitic, and I just want to know if you noticed that, and if you have, can you uh, elaborate on that? Thank you. Thank you, brother. Um, yeah, I haven't really noticed too much of it, so you know, I can't even. I haven't. I just haven't noticed too much of none of that stuff, to be honest. Because hey, look, I'm letting everybody hold their nuts as far as that stuff going on over there. I'm just letting everybody hold their nuts. People keep trying to drag us into these conflicts and they're trying to force us to speak up against things. And man, we're not obligated to do nothing. We are not obligated to do a thing, but be black and put on cocoa butter. That's all we're obligated to do. All right. Let's get some other people in here. And I ain't going to be in here too, too long. Cause you know, it's, 
I'll be in here all night chopping it up with the family. All right, let's get 40 acres and a mule. No, no, what's her name? Five star. It's five star. Hop on. Oh, you caught me drinking some water. Hi, Tariq. How you doing? I'm good. What's going on, sis? Um, well, I'm doing well. It's too... It's, it's, I don't get to be on your show or go onto your space that often because I'm on the East Coast. So I'm glad that I got to catch this one. Um, I hope everybody's doing well in the space. Today, I hosted a space with um, Marilyn Van. She testified for the um, Senate and she's also testified for the California Reparations Task Force. I guess gave her expert uh, I guess what testify is the good word. And so um, she is the president of the descendants of freedmen of the five civilized tribe. She is Cherokee freedmen. And um, I wanted to send you the space. Uh, we, You know, we used to follow each other on my other page before um, I got suspended, if I can say that. Yeah. Um, you know, I've run down a lot of white people and um, Democrats, uh, Republicans as well on the app. So it gets me into trouble. But um, I know I want to go up and speak to you about it because, you know, I do send you tweets every once in a while, not too often. But I just want to make sure that um, if you were interested in what she was speaking about or is interested in seeing what was happening, um, that I can speak to you directly so I can make sure that you get it. Yeah, I'll look into it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just send me whatever the space is, and I'll look into it. I'll check it out and see what they had to say. All right. Um, let me see who we got. Let's get Stone O'Tone. Stone O'Tone. Stone O'Tone. What's going on, Brother Flex? You can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, brother. What's going yeah, on? One of your 2000s babies tapping in. Uh... Okay. I've been I've been studying a lot about the tethered class a lot. I'm FBA by the way. Um, I noticed about the tether women. They'll project a lot of what happened to them in their homeland. I just watched a video by sister. African women over there ripping their clothes off and they'll and label that under all black men in order to protect their culture. I've been yeah, that. yeah, they yeah, but I land my plane here. Yeah, I've they been studying that man. And that's, you, yeah, they do a lot of that projecting on us, in which that's why we call them out. They come over here and talk about oh, these violent, violent black men. Black men are so violent. No, no, no. Like, well, where are you from? And they're from somewhere where they got whipped with a damn stick every morning. So they like to project their filth onto us. With a chick named Cola Booth who used to do that all the time. Because we've been calling the tether class out for that for years. And um, people like Cola Booth would be talking about how violent black men are, black men, black men. And she's over there from the Sudan where they be doing the forced female circumcisions and all of that. So, yeah, they come from these violent ass places. And then they try to come over here projecting the violence inflicted upon them like the brick gate girl when she jumped up here talking about some black men hit her with a, bl a brick and didn't nobody do anything everybody knew it was a finesse and she did she ended up getting her gofundme money the finesse she tried to run she actually got cashed out there was another chick on um another sister exposing the whole scam and the Brickgate chick, for a long time, she was online talking about she's scared to go out the house. And, oh, Lord, she's traumatized because the brick hit her in the head and she's so scared. Nigga, when that, GoFundMe, when that GoFundMe money hit, her ass was out at the club. She's out drinking, eating crab legs, popping collars, throwing money at strip joints, cockeying and kikiing. So, man... That that tether class come over here and just come up with with all types of scams and finesses, and then they try to project that stuff onto us. So it's a real interesting dynamic, man. All right, let me get um.
Ngame, Ngame Undugu. I think I'm pronouncing your name right. In Ngame? Ngame or Ngame? Tariq, what is up, my nigga? What's up? In, is it Ngame? It's Ngame. All right. What's going on, Ngame? How are you, Tariq? I'm good. What is on your mind, sir? Okay. He ran out of troll material. Sound like he might be a Middle Eastern dude trying to pretend to be West African. Yeah, yeah he's definitely foreign because he had no material. These guys are not really witty. They just do something real weird and, and bounce. They don't really have um, comedic timing. So he didn't think of any material. He's just like, hey, what's up, my nigga? And that was it. He didn't have anything else. That's why you, know, you guys' comedy is kind of dry. Uh, but I do want to get one more good call before I get up out of here. I would like to get one more good one. All right. Shout out to all the ladies on the bottom there. I see a lot of ladies out here in the room. And y'all stay out here being quiet. Y'all must be at home with your dudes. Your dude's laying up next to you, and you don't want to call in because you don't want this dude to throw an elbow across the bed on your ass. Because sometimes when we do the lives, y'all call up and be whispering, Hey, Tyreek, I love hearing colors. Uh, y'all got buck breaking on Blu-ray? Be whispering. <laughs> I'll be whispering like Ebony in Players Club. <laughs> oh, yeah, these niggas be scaring y'all ass. Lord. But um, shout out, what's up, Afro Elite? Let me get some uh, ladies hop up. Let me get some of y'all ladies on the bottom. Y'all hop up. Y'all, y'all ladies pop up. We've been talking to a lot of guys tonight. Some of the, the ladies on the bottom. Y'all hop up and give a shout out real quick. Let's get some of your feminine energy. Some of the, the ladies on the bottom. There's a whole bunch of y'all down there. All right. We got damn near a thousand people in here in the middle of the night. Damn. We are in here heavy in the middle of the night. Wow. All right. Let's get it popping. Who we got? Let me, let's ladies hop on here. Let's get some feminine energy in here. All right. And when I mean lady, not T.S. Giselle. Let's get ladies in here. Ladies, let's get it popping. Let's get pray more. Let's get pray more in here. Pray more. Hey, what's up, Tariq? Haven't talked hey, in a few more. weeks, man. You? Doing good. Hope you're well and the family also. Just wanted to come up and say hi to everyone and um, just send out some blessings. You're doing a great job with everything. Can't wait to see the documentary on hip hop because I'm ready to see what you got to say about my boy Pig Meat Markham from Durham. So. Yeah, I'm ready to hear that. Yes, indeed. Yes, ma'am. Have a great Thanks one, guys. Thanks so much, dear. You're welcome. Uh huh. Yes, indeed. She she trying to sound sexy. Uh, I I can tell y'all be trying to sound sexy. Yeah. Um, she that's she had on her trying to get a bill paid voice. That's how she be calling the, the niggas. Hey, Mister Richard, I just calling to see what you doing. I'm fine. Yeah, how you doing? Oh, I'm good. My my car note, you know, my car note then came up. I'm struggling. <laughs> For real? Oh, Lord, you ain't got to struggle no more, baby. <laughs> she trying to get back. <laughs> I'm messing with you, dear. She's like, uh oh, let me defend my name. I'm not saying that you got on your, you had on your, Sugar daddy finessing voice. Like you, you, you be calling them old players. <laughs> and my life's about to get turned off Friday. <laughs> I just called to see if you can just throw a blessing my way. <laughs> oh, I'm messing with you. You don't have to get on. <laughs> let me get her on. Let me let her defend us. <laughs> What's up, dear? Hey. Don't say so I'm in a bind, Nate. No. <laughs> but no, I do need to. Um, do you have an email that I can send you? Because we actually, I meant to tell you too, we have a black owned cotton farm here 
in North Carolina. We've had it for six generations, and um, we're doing a few things. We've got a little over 400 acres that we do cotton and soybean, and it's almost harvest time. So I definitely wanted to link with you on that. So um, if you could maybe shoot uh, the email to me or something, because I don't see the DM option on your page. Yeah, my email is info at Tariq dot la okay. info at Tariq dot all right okay, yeah, so you'll see it from uh pray more prep at gmail i'll go ahead and shoot you something now cool thank you dear all right, all right. cool cool oh, i gotta see that they got a cotton farm out there i'd like to see that look i've been wanting to go out there to the carolina especially south carolina well south that south carolina food be busting dude i don't know why people be slipping on sleeping on south carolina nigga. that food be busting out there, South Carolina don't be BSing around. Y'all, y'all, y'all need to go and visit a lot of these FBA cities, man. A, a lot of these cities where we're the predominant population, man. It's a cool vibe. I like going around, just kicking it with the FBA family, man. That's why I like going to New Orleans, um, Georgia, places in Georgia. Um, I mean, it, it's it's a vibe. We need to travel to a lot of these cities and and just vibe out with the family man you guys will enjoy it. go down to birmingham for a weekend vibe out with the people in birmingham go out to you know atlanta everybody know about atlanta or go to the carolinas when i went to um savannah i had a ball out there man with the fba family great great wonderful people out there man get some of that southern hospitality we need to start doing that. Just hit up some of these cities and vibe out with the people. I I, I want to get out to um, Oklahoma. I haven't really kicked it in Oklahoma. I want to go to Tulsa to vibe out with the family out there. Yeah. But, um, you know, I went to Buffalo. Buffalo, they named a day after me in Buffalo. Just vibing with the family out there. I did a lecture out there because we had a screening years ago, and they gave me a day. Um um, Tuesday, what what is it? It was like November 4th. One of those days is Tariq Nasheed Day in Buffalo. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know I had a day in Buffalo? The mayor gave me a day in Buffalo out there. Uh, there's Tariq Nasheed Day. There's a, I think there's another one in Miami Gardens, too. I think uh, we got another Tariq Nasheed Day in Miami Gardens. Yeah, all y'all people in politics, give me some all these other cities. Give me some more days. I would love that. I love it. That gives me an excuse to go out there and kick it with y'all. I'm the FBA family in all of these cities. Holler at your city council people. Holler at the mayor to give me a day out there. I would love that. So I can come out there and kick it and bring the family. That'd give me an, an excuse to come on out and kick it. And, uh, right. Who else we got in here? Uh, and by the way, don't forget to get your root work deodorant at rootworkstyle.com. Rootworkstyle.com, ladies and gentlemen. And and by the way, hit the Kickstarter for the new movie, America, not America, the new movie, Microphone Check. That's going to be a phenomenal piece. We're working very hard getting that movie together right now. Microphone Check. You can go to microphonecheck.com. And get information about that, and you can go to the Kickstarter link from microphonecheck.com family. But let me get out of here because let me speaking of microphone check, I got work to do before I go to bed tonight. But anyway, man, it's been real. Pumpy Akute and Lola Bube to the family. Y'all have a good night. <laughs>